Okay. <clears throat> In this section of the course, what we're going to be talking about are what are known as mixed models. And in mixed models, what we're going to be trying to ad address now is situations in which we may have a normal error distribution uh, or a non-normal error distribution, a linear component or a non-linear component. But the particular assumption that we're breaking down here now is that the observations are all independent of each other. So what we're going to start accounting for is the degree to which observations from uh, are, are grouped or, ca or uh, correlated with each other in some particular way. So let's see what we mean by that. This is a data set that's provided from the, the textbook that we've uh, seen before. What we've got is species richness uh, on a bunch of different uh, beaches and, uh, and then samples that have been taken at differing heights on each beach from uh, uh, relative to the median tide line. So zero here represents mean sea level. These are levels of the uh, points on the beach that are above that tide line. And these are points that are below that particular tide line. And the overall the scatter plot indicates that the lower down you are on the beach, the greater the species richness in terms of uh, sediment dwelling invertebrates. And so we've looked before at various flavors of model that look like this where the uh, we've simply fitted a, a straight line down uh, a straight line function between NAP and richness. Now we could also imagine however that there's eight beaches these samples are not all of these samples are not each of these points comes from a different beach and so you can imagine, you know, asking the question, are all of these relationships the same on all beaches? And that would be the same as looking at a interaction between the category beach and the continuous predictor NAP. And if we make our predictions from our model, uh, if we fit that model and then, and then have a look at it, we get a relationship that looks like this. So now we have one line for each beach, and each of those lines has a different intercept and a different slope. And you can see that there's a, a group of beaches that are actually all pretty similar and then there's a few other beaches that are just wildly different that have much higher uh, intercepts as well as uh, different slopes. And we could also imagine fitting a model in which we don't look at the interaction between beach and um, NAP but we simply allow uh, for an effect of beach, and that means we would end up with parallel lines that have different um, intercepts. So the intercept is right here along the zero axis, and so you can see that now we get different lines. They're all parallel to each other. They all have the same effect of NAP, but they have different intercepts depending on which beach they're on. And finally we could imagine a model in which we force all beaches to have the same intercept but we allow them to have different slopes. Um, and you can see that that sort of model doesn't, doesn't work very well. Essentially this is the same as excluding the main effect of beach um, and only allowing for an interaction between beach and NAP. And you know this is clearly not a, a model that sort of makes a lot of uh, biological sense. So let's take a look at, at this output of this model right here. What we can see if we do the ANOVA table for that model is that we get uh, a strong effect of NAP as we would expect, uh, beaches have a strong effect, and the NAP by beach interaction term is also um, highly significant. So that would suggest that that model that we've just uh, described there for panel B is in fact a good model to use. The relationship between uh, NAP and uh, richness varies depending on which beach you're on and it varies it, both the intercept changes that's why this factor is here and the slope is varying that's why the interaction term is there is significant. But there's a problem here if we just use that the way that we've done we would in fact not be able to make predictions to beaches other than the ones that we had estimated. 
So what we've, what we've done in that previous model is estimate the effect of those particular beaches. And this might be what we're interested in. It might be that they're, you know, these are all the beaches in the world and we're never going to want to ask this question of any other beaches. But that's not likely. In this case, it seems that these beaches are a sample of all possible beaches. So we're not really directly interested in these beaches themselves. They just happen to be groups. And in particular, what happens then is that points that have been sampled on the same beach are more likely to, or have the same relation, more likely to have the same relationship with each other than points that are sampled on different beaches. But we don't want to restrict ourselves to just making predictions about these beaches. So what we really want to do is we want to say how much variation is there in the slope and the intercept between beaches. So what we want to do is we want to in fact express our model as a sort of core fixed component beta naught our intercept plus beta 1 times NAP and then a second random component where we've got little, little b naught j where j stands for beach and b1 j times NAP so these little b's here are what we're going to call random effects. They're similar to our coefficients that we've that we've dealt with before, but rather than assuming that they have a particular value, we're going to assume that as a group they have a distribution. Okay? So in this case what we're doing is we're saying here we've got our random component of our model that we've always had before, our epsilon ij, which is going to be normal with our residual error sigma squared. But now we're adding a new random component, and that's these b's, little b's, uh, and there's going to be one little value of little b for each beach, uh, and it'll have both a slope component, sorry, slope component and an intercept component. And those are also going to be normally distributed, and there will be a different variance for each uh, parameter. So in this case, we've got uh, a, a variant. We'll have a variance for the slope and a variance for the intercept. So the key point here is that when you've got a group, a category, and it's not, and, and that ca the individuals in that category represent samples from some larger population that you might eventually be interested in, then you uh, might find this mixed effects approach where you combine random effects and fixed effects to be a very useful uh, way of thinking about things. So when we fit these models um, we get a couple of new estimates and um, I won't talk right now about how the R code works for this but we get we basically gonna get a random effects estimate and a fixed effects estimate. The fixed effects estimates look exactly like what we've seen all along. We're gonna have an intercept which will have some intercept and a standard error and then a coefficient for NAP which has its estimate and its standard error. So what you can see here is that these um, these this part of the model still looks exactly the same as, it, as the model that we had before that didn't have uh, an interaction effect or a um, uh, of between beach and NAP. So the fixed effects now are, are the same. What we've added that's new now are some estimates for the random effects and this is for a model that only allows the intercept to vary randomly. So we're just looking essentially at that model where we're going to have a bunch of parallel lines and we're going to have values for those uh, or, or deviations from this intercept for each separate beach and those deviations are going to be normally distributed with a variance of 8.67 or a standard deviation of 2.94 and we also have a residual uh, variance just like we've always had 9.36 and 3.06 is for a standard deviation okay now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the model where we allow both the slope and the intercept to have random components attached to them. And again, we still have the same fixed effects estimates. They're going to be slightly different than the ones previously, um, but not a lot different. 
but we've added now a new line. We're going to have our groups are beach and there's going to be an effect of intercept a beach on the intercept that now has a larger variance than the uh, one did before and an effect of uh, NAP or a ver beach is now also affecting NAP with some variance. And you'll notice that the residual uh, variance has decreased from 9.36 to 7.31. So some of the residual variance has now been uh, accounted for in our variation uh, between beaches in the in the slope component. If we look at the random slope model we see that it's um, it's quite poor, has a very large residual error and in fact we end up with a variance of zero for the uh, NAP so there isn't really any estimated uh, variability in that case. And when you see a variance estimate of zero that suggests that, you're, that the, you should treat such a model with a great degree of caution uh, because it means that the software was not able to find a positive uh, variance estimate which is um, indicative of numerical estimation errors. So which model is better? How do we decide uh, which particular uh, model we're going to pick? Well, this turns out to be actually a little bit tricky because what we're doing is comparing a series of models, even though they have the same fixed effect structure, they differ in their random effects. And when you move from a random effect of uh, both slope and intercept to intercept only, you've set the variance of the random effect on the slope to zero but in fact and and that's typical in a nested model but what's not typical is that in this particular case we're actually on the boundary of the parameter space so having a negative variance actually does not make sense you have to have a positive variance only and the so that that makes things a little bit a little bit tricky. Testing on the the um, chi-squared approximations that we typically use to compare likelihoods uh, assume that we're or don't or break down in this particular case when we're looking at this boundary condition. Uh, one thing that people will often do is they will use AIC in this case um, and so we can have a look at these slope only that was the very poor one 260 uh, slope and intercept 244 intercept only was slightly larger at 247. So slope and intercept has the lowest AIC and the delta AIC is about 3.1. So there's pretty good evidence that in fact it should be um, a slope and intercept model. There's one wrinkle here uh, that is important if we're treating these things as, as normal error distributions. Um, we have to use a, a component called restricted maximum likelihood in order to make these comparisons between random effects. Um, and essentially what this restricted maximum likelihood does is focuses only on that part of the likelihood that varies with the variance estimators. So you can really only compare models that differ in their random effects. If you are going to be changing uh, the fixed effects components of the models, then you have to um, turn off restricted maximum likelihood and focus on using maximum likelihood only. So that's our first brief introduction to mixed models. We'll be looking at more examples of these uh, as we go along.